Good evening, folks. This is Bill Breeden. Welcome to my Constellation Tour class number nine. Um, this class will cover the Constellation Lynx. Lynx is a northern celestial hemisphere constellation. And I will be the first to tell you that Lynx is not the easiest constellation to find. And it, it does remain a rather obscure constellation. So hopefully after tonight's lesson, you will feel a little bit more comfortable with Lynx. So let's find it. I'm going to start by facing north. I have Stellarium set up here for February the 5th at 9 p.m. And Lynx is best viewed from February through April. Um, I, did, I did try March and it was so close to the zenith. Most amateur astronomers try to avoid the zenith because um, some telescopes, it's difficult for some telescopes to point straight up. So I went for earlier in its viewing season where, when it's not quite as high up. It's still pretty high up in the sky, though. So how do we want to go about finding links? So let's, let's turn on our constellation lines so we have something to go by. We're facing due north, so here's the north star. And in February... The, the Big Dipper is over in the 3 o'clock position from the North Star. So you want to find the Big Dipper and you want to look right above it, okay? That will take you to Lynx. It's a long, thin constellation. And as I said before, it's sort of obscure. Um, another way to, to guide yourself towards it is to find the Bright Star Capella and look between the Big Dipper and Capella, and Lynx occupies this area of the sky. Let's turn on our boundaries, and you can see the area of the sky. Lynx is, it's actually, it's actually a pretty big area of the sky. I mean, it's every, every bit as big as Auriga or Perseus. Um, it just doesn't get that much attention because there are no bright stars in links to, to draw your, your eye to it. So let's turn let's turn on the mythical figures and have a look at links. Um, when links culminates um, highest in the sky it is upside down. It it's um it's some sort of cat and it's <laughs> really kind of strange looking but yeah, that's that's links. So I hope that helps you at least locate it in the sky. Okay, we return back to naked eye view, and you can see there really isn't isn't much there to to draw your attention to it. It's these stars here that form sort of a jagged line between Capella and the Big Dipper. So. These brighter stars below it are part of Ursa Major, so it links is this area right here. So let's look for some double stars while we're in this area. Let's look for 12 Linces. And you can see where that is in the constellation. Let's have a look at that through our finder scope. That's listed here in the software as a seventh magnitude double star. It's 228 light years from Earth. Well, let's look through the eyepiece. And I'm not seeing it. It's even listed in the software as a double star, but I'm not seeing it that way. Let's see if uh, let's see if a higher power eyepiece would do the trick.
Yes, it does. So it's it's difficult to split. You'll have to put a, a higher power eyepiece on it. Okay, we return to naked eye view here. And you can still see the little wiggly line here. This whole area is, is links. So let's look for another another double star, 19 lenses. And let's make it dark. See if that makes our task any, any more pleasurable. Um, oh boy, I'm really lost in the stars. Here's the top of the Big Dipper. Here's Capella. And it looks like this is the little wrinkle of stars here we saw from the suburbs. Let's see. Yes, it is. Okay. Okay, let's look for 19 lenses. And Stellarium does list that as a double star as well. So you can see that there are plenty of stars in this area, and there's a lot of double stars in, in Lynx. I think Lynx is kind of known for double stars, if it's known for anything. I mean, there's not really much else there. There is one, there is one globular cluster that I'll, I'll talk about a little bit later that's actually one of my favorite deep sky objects of all time, and I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit later. So let's have a look at this double star through the eyepiece. There we go. 19 lenses. And this listed as A. I wonder if that means that this one here is B. I don't know how they differentiate that. Let's oh there we go. So there is let's see. So that is that's a nice double star. It's a seventh magnitude double star, 360 light years from Earth. Okay, let's return to a naked eye view. And let's try one more double star that I have on my list, 38 lenses. And this one is listed at sixth magnitude. 120 light years from Earth. So that one doesn't split here with a 30 with a 26 millimeter eyepiece. But that doesn't mean it won't split with more power. That one's a really close double. Look how close in I had to get to split it. So if if you want to try 38 lenses, it might be um it might be an interesting challenge object. It is rather bright. It's magnitude four. So, but it, with it, with me having to zoom in that far, that would lead me to believe you would need one of your higher power eyepieces, a 10 millimeter or six millimeter eyepiece, something in that range to at least attempt to split it. Okay, I, I promised you a globular cluster and you're going to get a globular cluster. This is one of my favorite deep sky objects. It's NGC 2419. So let's go ahead and find it first. And you can see the name of it up there. It's Intergalactic Wanderer or Intergalactic Tramp. Um, and its distance is why I'm so fascinated by it. It's 270,000 light years away. 
Now, why is that interesting to me? I mean, there are galaxies that are millions and tens of millions of light years away. But here's, here's why it fascinates me. Most globular clusters are in the tens of thousands of light years away range. 20,000 light years, 40,000 light years, 60,000 light years. Um, after that, there really isn't isn't much in space until you reach another galaxy, um, like the Andromeda galaxy at 2.5 million light years away. So if you can picture in your mind that you're, you're in a spaceship and you're rocketing away from the Milky Way galaxy, once you get to the point where you're several tens of thousands of light years away, um, you're in the realm of the globular clusters. And once you get past six figures, 100,000 light years away, or or more there's nothing there there's just empty space with the exception of objects like this one the intergalactic wanderer it kind of it kind of occupies an area of space where there you really wouldn't expect there to be much um, pay attention to distances when you're when you're looking up dark or deep sky objects you won't find many that are in the six figure light year distance range away and this one this one falls square into that range at 270,000 light years. Some references listed at 300,000 light years, but nevertheless, it's it's in a really, really just void. It's in a void, and that that just fascinates me. So let's let's look at it through our finder here, and see what we can see. We can see a a bright star just above it, and we can actually start to see the globular cluster. Now, don't expect it to be really bright. It is far away. That's the point. So let's look at it through our 26 millimeter eyepiece. And it's listed as a ninth magnitude globular cluster. So you can, you can see it through the eyepiece um, with moderate power. Um, but I do recommend venturing out to a dark sky site if you want to take a look at the intergalactic wanderer. Okay, this concludes my tour of links, and I thank you for joining me, everyone. Good night and good seeing.